Hello and welcome to another Drone Man Scotland video. This week we are looking at North Berwick Harbour, which actually dates all the way back to the 12th century. The harbour at North Berwick in East Lothian was originally a ferry port. This was for pilgrims travelling across the Firth of Forth to St Andrews in Fife. Today the water is home to leisure craft, a famous tourist launch the Sula 3 and the remains of the fishing fleet that once dominated the area, while on dry land the Scottish Seabird Centre, East Lothian Yacht Club and the Old Kirk Green are the main attractions. You can also get yourself a banging portion of fish and chips in North Berwick. I can't even remember the name of the place, but I'm sure someone will remind us in the comments. The harbour was built around 1150, with the first documented record of its existence coming in 1177. In the early days, there were ferry services to Ellsbury near Ely in Fife, with up to 10,000 pilgrims passing through the port every year. When North Berwick received the Royal Charter and became a royal borough in 1373, the design of a ferry boat was incorporated into the town crest, which remains unchanged even to this day. Legend has it, on Halloween 1590, Satan himself attended a coven on the Old Kirk Green. Although an earlier version of the tale records that Satan was played by Francis Stuart, 5th Earl of Bothwell. Stuart was a pretender to the throne and was apparently attempting to incite a storm which would sink the boat carrying James IV back from Norway with his new bride. In any case, this event so angered James IV that it triggered the North Berwick witch trials and the witch hunts that would eventually sweep the length and breadth of Britain. Those known to have participated in rituals at North Berwick are said to have died during the subsequent investigations, most likely at the hands of their investigators. As a wee side note, uh, Francis Stewart actually lived at Crichton Castle, and we covered Crichton Castle in an earlier video, so we'll pop a link to that video in this video's description. Pilgrims gradually became few and far between, and after over 500 years of operation, the ferry services had disappeared by 1692. The focus of the harbour then switched to commerce and fishing, the main exports in 1794 being wheat and barley, and the main imports, wood and iron. The harbour was deepened in 1804 and again in 1831, allowing large commercial craft to dock. The arrival of the railway in North Berwick lessened the needs for freight to be shipped in, but allowed local fishermen to send their catches to all parts of the UK and beyond. As a result, the number of fishing craft swelled 
from the two recorded at the end of the 17th century to 30 by 1881. At one point, there were plans for the railway to extend all the way to the harbour and for the harbour to be connected to the island of Craigleith by a long pier, but these plans were dropped and the harbour and railway have changed very little since. Two shorter piers were built to accommodate larger craft and to allow others to dock when beaten by the tides, the first of which, the North Pier, lasted from 1811 until a huge storm finished it off in 1898. The Galloway Pier opened in 1877. It was initially busy, but saw little or no traffic in the interwar period and was eventually demolished by 1940, having fallen into disrepair. As larger ships no longer visit North Berwick, there is no appetite to rebuild a large pier. A smaller, modern concrete pier exists in its place today. The latter half of the 19th century also saw a boom in tourism, as wealthy families discovered North Berwick to be an ideal landscape from the overcrowded cities. As well as Edinburgh, train services to North Berwick came direct from as far afield as London as people came to relax, walk, shoot and golf in the area. The outdoor swimming pool at the harbour was a focal point for galas and competitions. The pool was constructed around 1900 and it helped generations of local youngsters to learn how to swim, including one of Edinburgh's chosen sons who grew up to be Sir Ronnie Corbett. The comedian was one of those who unsuccessfully attempted to save the pool when it was threatened with closure in the 1990s. Despite best efforts of local campaigners, East Lothian Council closed the pool, which was supposedly heated but rarely felt like it, in 1996. It put an end to decades of fun, including the Galladay tradition of throwing unlabeled food cans into the pool for children to retrieve. I just didn't think you'd get the wee ones of today doing that. Visitors with an interest in nature were also able to land at the island bird colony on the Bash Rock. Although the red sandstone harbour and buildings have changed little in their external appearance, the old granary is now home to modern flats and the interior of many others have been remodelled for housing, boat storage or office space. The Scottish Seabird Centre has become a major tourist attraction since opening in 2000 and tourists can still take the Sula 3 to see the gannets, puffins and other bird life in the area. That's it for this week guys, we hope you enjoyed the video, please do let us know what you thought, as well as subscribe if you haven't already. If you don't, we'll go all James the Fourth on your ass! Just kidding, you know we love you. Thanks and bye for now.